Hey guys, Lone Spin here. Hope you guys are doing good. So, um, I actually did this entire video earlier, and then I realized that I probably said one of the dumbest things I've ever said on the channel, let alone as a gunsmith and shooter. Um, if you've been on the channel for a while, or since we started, all you hardcore fans, um, you probably heard me talk about my deer rifle hitting right. Today I finally decided to fix that. Um, it was... Oh, this weapon is clear, by the way. It was the screw on this mill dot. Scope. What was happening. And this is a... Barska. Barska 3-9x42IR. Anyway... Um, what ended up happening was when you're dialing in, the screw would loosen up, so it would only dial in so far left, because once the screw loosened up enough, it wouldn't actually hold it tight enough to spin the gear on the inside. So what I did is I took it off, and I put blue Loctite on it. So if you're just here for that, there you go. Um, other than that... Um, the dumb thing that I had stated was after I did that, I sighted it in with a bore cider, the Bushnell bore cider. Um, I sighted it in with that bore cider and it actually put me really close to where I wanted to be. And it was just a hair right. Uh, so I made some minor adjustments and what I had stated, cause I hadn't done a hundred yard shoot yet. All I had done was a 10 yard shoot. And what I had stated was that um, if elevate uh, windage doesn't matter, if you're hitting at 10 yards, you're gonna hit the same at 100 yards. That is absolutely false. And I thought about it as I was shooting, and I will show you guys exactly what I mean. If you don't understand ballistics, I read it down for you. This is how ballistics work. Now the straight line, you're gonna hit at 10 yards and 100 yards. And if you go a little bit right, you're going to hit a hair right at 10 and quite off at 100. And if you're a decent amount off at 10, you're going to hit way off at 100. That's just how ballistics works. So as I was out doing 100 yard shoot, I realized that I had definitely said that. And it was probably one of the dumbest things I've ever stated. Um... That's why I ended up deleting the footage and redoing the whole video. Um, also, if you've been on the channel for a while, you know that I have an RAK9. The front sight post was a little funky, so I decided to remove it today. If you know anything about front AK post sights, typically, especially if they come from out of the country, I think that's how that works. They have a split in the middle, and it's to kind of keep it a little bit tight to flare it a little bit to keep it tight uh in the the windage block um so when i took mine out mine was all collapsed and it was all loose and weird so i ended up spreading the site back out and i had it pretty good put it all back together and then i was like oh i don't like how loose it fits so instead of doing something different about it i decided i was going to open it up a little more and now we have this this is what used to be a front ak site post or an rak9 post so i ended up ordering a new one and i didn't have a front sight tool anyway for an ak so i ended up ordering one anyway i needed it as much as I really don't like sighting in firearms, because I'm very particular and picky, um, it does give me a reason to burn through a box of 9 millimeter, which is always a fun day. So, we'll get that sucker sighted in, hopefully. <laughs> if not, I'll put a rail on it, slap a red dot on it, and call it good. Now, I, I do want to stick with iron sights with the RAK-9. Um, 
most of my rifles have scopes and red dots and it's always nice to have a set of iron sights or a weapon with a set of iron sights to rely on so yeah i said some dumb stuff wipe the footage here we are but anyway so if you have a mil dot scope um the barskis they're not super expensive they're like 150 170 bucks for a mil dot scope that the ir i believe is for it has green and red light the crosshairs light up um so i, I think that's what the ir is for because usually ir i think is for night vision but whatever i guess it would be considered some type of night vision because you can see the scope in the dark you can't see the, anything on the other end of the scope, but at least you can see your crosshairs. But, uh, yeah, um, it's not a bad scope. That's the thing about if you're a gun, if you're into guns, you, 150 bucks for a scope, um, is considered a low budget scope. I think my red dot on my AR is a spark. AR red dot sorry not my AR my FX9 um and that's uh that's low budget it's good quality I mean, it's not like a Trijicon but um or an uh an aim point uh, drew a blank there for a second it's not like those but at the same time it does what I need it to do it holds zero that's the important thing so yeah, anything in the 100, 200 to even closer to 300 range, it's typically uh, low end quality or what they call budget price. It's not low end quality. It's not bad. Um, the Barska it needed needed a little fixing. Uh, like I said, what was happening was the screw was coming loose, so it wouldn't allow you to dial out anymore. And what good's a mil dot scope that won't dial out? You know, <laughs> they're made to be able to, to dial in and out on the fly and then make adjustments when you need to, especially when you're sighting in. I mean, I'm not shooting a thousand yards, but at the same time, I want to make sure it holds true at a hundred when I shoot at a deer I don't like to miss so you know you get what you pay for I suppose um which it's not a bad rifle scope it's worked pretty good so far uh just needed a little work that's all so you know uh you can look for um obviously you can get more expensive stuff like Vortex uh a good friend of mine that's basically all he runs is vortex i actually almost went with a vortex romeo 4 for my fx9 i was on the verge of buying it and then i had seen the the spark ar red dot and i liked uh that it takes a triple a battery so that's why i went that route uh, but vortex makes really good quality and then obviously you have some of your higher end scopes and honestly Ruger Americans probably are right now in like the four or five hundred dollar range uh, when I bought this one it had the scope and a bipod and all that on it and I think it was like five something so um, you can buy scopes just as expensive as your rifle twice as expensive as your rifle the one thing you want to make sure is that you're getting decent quality especially when you're running higher calibers um because you know the recoil really does beat up your scope and if it can't take it then you're going to lose your zero and you're going to be hitting all over the place that's not that fun Oh, and it's not that fun, and such not. <laughs> so, new catchphrase. So, 
the Huntsman. Sighted in that scope today. I was still pulling my shots a little right. I got to get back out for some 100 yard shooting. Um, also, uh, broke my front AK post. But, or our AK 9 anyway. We'll get there. I'll do a video on replacing the new one anyway. So, this has been Huntsman32. It's great seeing you guys. You learned a little ballistics and learned how to fix a mill dot scope when they mess up. Have a great day, guys. It's great seeing you.